Hey guys, uh, Elijah here, um, 85 Studios. Um, got a little problem with the truck, but I think I figured out what the deal is here. Um, see, the uh, the carburetor um, has uh, it's got a, uh, a 350 CFM uh, two barrel Holley carburetor on it. And it's got a, um, let's see, uh, 2300, H2300, um, two barrel on it. Now I'm coming in here to grab a couple tools here that I might need. Um, so basically, what we're looking at here, grab my tools out of my toolbox here. Um, need that, need that, need that. I think that's it. Um, what has happened is, in between the, um, let me look at my notes here on the screen, that is called a vent body baffle, uh, in the installation kit. Um, basically what it does is it goes between the carburetor bowl and the, um, the, uh, metering block inside the carburetor. And uh, what I think it does, uh, my theory on it is, uh, it actually um, prevents the fuel from sloshing up into, above the metering block, there's a vent that it basically covers, um, prevents the fuel from sloshing up. And I'll show you right quick if I can. I don't know how well this is gonna work, I'll try it. Broke the camera. There's no room to do anything under here. Try to get this angle down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Just stick the tripod under the hood. Why not? Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. I basically take the wing nut off here. You can see past my fat head. Get this off. You see this vent right here? Now, up underneath here, there's that vent body baffle. This is your carburetor bowl right here. Inside of there, there's a float, and this is how you adjust the float level. There's a sight plug on the other side, you can't see it right now. And basically, what happens is this vent body baffle. This is your vent, and it sits on, the vent body baffle sits on two little posts inside of here. This is your metering block right here, and then this attaches to your carburetor bowl. Okay, um, this vent body baffle sits on two little pegs here, real small piece of plastic. And, uh, what it does, I think, in theory, is it, uh, prevents the fuel from when the vehicle moves forward the fuel is going to move back prevents it from coming up through here and sloshing fuel into here which you would obviously have a, a flooding type scenario if, if that wasn't there so basically um, what it, what keeps happening and I've seen it before on this particular carburetor several times and I, I think I've figured out how to remedy it as well is that vent body baffle, that little piece of plastic I was telling you about, keeps falling off and sinking down underneath the float in the carburetor bowl. And then what happens is that fuel not only spills up in here, so you get surging and flooding when you step on the accelerator, but it also, at idle, um, when you say you open up a vacuum leak with your uh, vacuum booster here by pushing the brakes, um, you're basically, uh, it's, the fuel level is coming up here, and it's staying at the top of this, this float level, or wherever the float is, and it's causing this to not be able to, uh, drop air into that bowl, and into the metering block, to mix the fuel-air ratio correctly. So that's, 
uh, what's happening here is it's running extremely rich because it can't get any air. Okay, so I'm going to take off that second gear kick down there. Um, of a wrench. Maybe it will. Well, that's not good. My accelerator cable is loose. Um, go ahead and take this off if I can. Right quick. So we'll do a montage. We'll fast forward right quick. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some tools here and take off my uh, carburetor. i got to take a fuel line off over here first, and there's some various vacuum hoses, and there's an electrical line that runs to this electric choke here. So let me get over on that side and take that fuel line off. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and, I got the fuel line off here, I'm going to go ahead and grab a uh, wrench here, and for some reason there's a couple different sizes on this, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I think there's a 3 8 and a half inch on it, I don't know why, but the threads are all the same, so internally it seems to be able to work, and that would be the 3 8 right there. So, one montage.
Okay, so we're just going to lift it straight up. It's on four bolts. Don't tilt it. Under here is your intake manifold and spacer with EGR for 1977. Uh, this is a 1977 Ford Ranchero GT. It's got the uh, 351 Windsor uh, 5.8 liter. And here's your two barrel Holly 2300, which is a 350 CFM. Uh, two barrel carburetor with an electronic choke basically it's got a little spring in there like a thermometer okay um, and that gasket's actually looking pretty good uh, this has got the three speed FMX transmission up underneath it as well and it let's see what else uh, I'm using XL super stock coil um, and MSD is hidden up underneath the dash so So okay, um, you want to uh, protect this area right here, this is your intake, you want to protect it uh, because it's very important that nothing falls in there, um, leaves or um, uh, anything metal especially, anything at all, um, you want to keep it out of there because if anything falls in there, what will happen is it will hit your valves, and this is an overhead valve engine. Um, and it can actually cause problems with your pistons and your piston clearance and that kind of thing as well. Um, it can get into the cylinders and it can really mess things up. So, okay. Now then, for the rest of our video here, um, we're going to be using, we're going to be going inside. And we're going to be using the other camera on the table so that you guys can see what I'm actually doing uh, to this. I'm going to go ahead and close up the hood here and uh, end this portion of the video. And I'll come back on the other camera. Okay? So I'll see you then. Okay, guys. Um, we're on the bench here um, where we do all of our... Ooh. Three, two, one. Okay, guys, uh, we're on the bench here now where we do all of our little experiments here and uh, all of our electronics projects and things like that. This is our uh, H2300, uh, 350 uh, CFM uh, Holly carburetor, two barrel, uh, off of our 1977 Four Branch Aero GT. Um, what I'm going to do here is I suspected that the uh, vent. Uh, body valve or oh god I forget what it was I said it earlier um, the uh, little piece of plastic in here has uh, come off and is sitting in our carburetor bowl here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the carburetor bowl and I'm going to uh, make sure that it stays on there because it has come off um, I did this earlier today but I think that what may have happened is I may have uh, when I dropped it into reverse, it may have dropped that piece back down into the carburetor bowl. So we're going to take this off and uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, put it back together. These four bolts here actually just unscrew. So we're just, just going to do a montage here while I unscrew this and open it up.
Okay, so <clears throat> since we've had this off earlier, um, it's probably not going to be a uh, real uh, big of a deal, but you want to be very careful if you don't have the seals to replace this. Um, this has actually been rebuilt uh, less than two months ago, and uh, the reason why it was rebuilt was because it was um, this similar a similar issue to this, but it had uh, it was acting real rough, like it was dirty inside. And then I'm actually glad that I did rebuild it when I did because when I rebuilt it, um, I noticed there was a lot of white. Um, powdery type residue inside of it, uh, inside the metering block and inside uh, the other parts. So okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, remove this carburetor bowl here very carefully. And what do you want to bet? Yes, that is exactly what has happened. You see what has happened here? The little piece, this little plastic piece it didn't come all the way off, but it fell onto the power valve here, which is causing a lot of problems for it, like surging and that kind of thing. So I figured out what's wrong with my setup here. This little piece right here, this is the culprit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift up this gasket very carefully here if we can get it off without breaking it. We may have to buy a new gasket if we do. And you remember how that was on the outside of this gasket? Well, this gasket actually holds that little piece in place. So very carefully lift this gasket off of here without breaking it since I don't have another one. The rebuild kit's only about $30, but I have tapped my bank account today buying groceries and parts and pieces for this. Right here, these are your jets. I checked those already. Um, this is your power valve, um, and it's brand new as well. Um, be careful with power valves. Actually, we can just slide this right under there if we're careful here. Oh, come on. Let's slide this right back under there, and this actually needs to go down. And that gasket actually is what holds this in place, just like so. And then just make sure your gasket goes back down over it nice and tight. And we'll put it back together, start it up and tune it up. Obviously, we can't be too obnoxious with it because uh, it's got turbo mufflers on it, and it is 12.52 a.m., so, but I wasn't going to go to sleep until I got this taken care of. So then we're going to go ahead and put the uh, carburetor bowl back on very carefully, like so. And go ahead and put the screws back in. See, so yeah, I got uh, some of the gaskets for the screws are on the screws. So I have to be very careful to make sure that I put them in the places where there are no gaskets, obviously. Fast forward.
Ah, you see what we did here? This isn't good. Forgot to hook up our accelerator pump. So we gotta. Actually, we're just gonna do this. It needs to be adjusted anyway. I forgot to do that. It's actually on as, as low as it can possibly go. It actually needs a longer spring because we've got some play in our accelerator pump. And what your accelerator pump does is there's diaphragm in here and every time you hit the throttle it pushes down on this like that. And what it does is it will um, give it a uh, boost uh, shoot some fuel through those jets to keep that engine get that engine moving uh, in RPM and uh, basically it, it doesn't flood it but it, it all but floods it um, which is why on a carbureted engine if you play with the throttle a lot and you pump the throttle a lot you actually uh, use more fuel and that is also the reason why when you pump the when you pump the gas you're actually you'll see it in here if your carburetor bowl is full you'll see a spray of fuel come in through here and that's what those jets were also in in the back here so uh, yeah we got that all hooked up we're gonna have to adjust it again I'm probably not gonna do that on camera because it's it's a little bit tedious it involves a ruler and a few other little items. Well, let's still turn it by hand. You know, make sure these are tight, but not too tight, because it is, uh, it is a cast uh, fixture, and if you break it, um, it's got gasoline flowing on the inside of it. So basically, what you're looking at is a fuel leak, and you cannot fix it yourself. And these are about three hundred and three hundred fifty dollars each, last I knew. So. It's really not a good thing to do. You don't want to break it. Alright. Um, so we got our choke. And everything is hooked up. There's a little piece of... Uh, this red... I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's our electronic choke. Right here. Um, your hot coming off your key comes on to right here. Um, this is obviously grounded to the chassis, which I think is actually kind of dangerous because you have any fuel leaks whatsoever and you or you have a uh, situation where this is um, not working, making a good ground and your choke is going to, since there's a coil inside of here, uh, cause a spark. Um, this right here is your metering hole where you can see the bowl. Uh, the level of the fuel inside of the bowl um, and I don't know if I showed you or if you might have seen it but inside this carburetor bowl there's a float that moves up and down and this right here this right here has a needle valve underneath it um, so that it basically as that float goes up it basically uh, 
pushes that needle valve up, which closes it and shuts off the fuel. Um, these are actually very simple the way they work. They're very simple. Um, and then everything else, the fuel is pulled through. The fuel and air are pulled through by vacuum uh, coming off of the engine. And the vacuum is actually produced by the pistons moving down away from the... Uh, there's, a, there's a stroke in there uh, on the piston that actually creates a vacuum. So at this point, we've got it all back together. Um, we are going to have to adjust our uh, fuel air these right here, fuel air ratio screws, uh, when we put it back on, because I had adjusted them, not realizing what the problem was. Uh, here's another one, if you can see it. Fuel air ratio, right there, screw. So, I'm going to get the other camera, which has got the fisheye lens on it, and move the tripod, and head back out under the hood, bolt this thing back down, uh, hopefully adjust it until it'll start and uh, my mistake uh, I've learned uh, from my mistake here uh, that little piece of plastic um, that we just put back on uh, is very important and what happened was the gasket actually is supposed to hold it in place if you go uh, on the float side of the gasket and you put it on there, the float side of the gasket like I did, it's going to fall off every time. Uh, all it would take is just pushing the, putting the vehicle in reverse or a bump or what have you. And it will surely fall off at least one side of it and it would definitely cause some performance issues. So we're going back outside and I'll see you out there. Alright guys, um, so we're back, and uh, I just got the carburetor sitting here. Um, so basically just the, the exact opposite of what we did before to take it off. Um, and then uh, turning the screws, starting it up, getting everything squared away, uh, tuned up. And that's pretty much about it. Um, so we'll just stick our carburetor on here. Oh, we'll just stick our carburetor on here. Very carefully. And where is it? So hopefully, turning that around the other way should prevent it from falling off again, that little piece of plastic anyway. And you're on the other side of me now, guys. I'm we'll just going to have this up. This is going to be a little bit longer video than most of them I've done, uh, even with the montage in there. Let's go ahead and uh, Fast forward here again.
<clears throat> it's very important to keep your hardware, all your nuts and bolts, where you can see them. Uh, because number one, you want to make sure that you can put them back on. But number two, something very important. If anything falls down this intake, you're going to have to take apart your entire engine, basically. You're going to have to take the intake manifold off to get it out because you cannot have, you cannot even attempt to start that engine with anything inside of that intake manifold, especially things that are metal like this. They'll destroy your engine. Oh, and I did it again. I'll loosen these back up so I can get this last one on. Well, maybe I don't. Never mind. There's this one bolt here that doesn't like to go on uh, if the carburetor is all the way down because of this spacer for the choke. And I think we got it. We got it. Ooh, one more thing. This is actually a heater, heat pipe for the choke, which is important. <clears throat> because as the engine warms up, the choke will start receiving warm air from the intake manifold. It'll start heating up and it'll open more. Back to the other side. Okay, so our carburetor's tight. 
I'll get hooked up a couple of vacuum lines, a throttle cable, and fuel line, and we're good. Okay. <clears throat> Zip this fuel line back on there right quick. was for the uh, power steering, but we don't need it because our, not power steering, it is for our uh, cruise control vacuum servo, um, but we don't need it so because our cruise control doesn't work and it's just all been disconnected. Uh, now you've got this, which is coming off of your vacuum advance uh, module. Um, on your uh, distributor here. It's a few, uh, vacuum line, just plugs in right here, and that's the fattest one. It's right underneath your choke. Plug it in. It's actually right underneath the uh, left mixture screw. And where's our EGR? We gotta hook up. Oh, do we wanna hook up EGR? Yeah, we gotta hook up EGR. We don't have emissions laws in Kansas, but we want to hook up EGR. It's designed for it. So we'll get a little bit less uh, horsepower with it, but... We're safer for the environment. Alright, so... We are... Uh, where is it? This right here. Hook this back up to our choke, and that's that power wire I was telling you about. And let's see, anything else? Anything else? I don't believe so. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to leave this off for right now so we can adjust it. I'm going to go ahead and try to start it up. Uh, if I have my keys, I think I do. Let me go get my keys.
moment of truth. I think I ended up rolling forward a little bit and moving the angle of the camera, so I'm going to have to move it again. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and try starting it up and uh, see what happens here. Start it up, see if we can get it to run. Might make adjustments as we go. Again, those fuel air screws I was telling you about. I'm gonna have to loosen them up a little bit and see what happens. Bring them back. That one in particular. <coughs> see if we can get it to start.
make an adjustment for sure. If you fuck is gonna screw that. I think I know what may have happened. Should have started three fucking, ten fucking times by now. Here's the thing. This right here. Okay. This right here. That right there. Checking wiring. Um, double checking wiring. Remember we had the camera sitting over here? Well, we got our ignition module over here, and it's possible that we may have pulled the wire loose. So, we're going to see if we can find any loose wires. And if we can, we're going to fix them. starting up and running before like an actual vehicle even though it was running like shit it was running grab my drop light here see if I can see anything Compressor not hooked up, works not hooked up, not charged. Mm. <coughs> okay, all these little wires here. It's acting like it's not getting spark, not even attempting. You notice. Not even attempting to fire. Which it would. Trying again. So annoyed. Uh, let's see. Pull one of the plug wires and check for a spark.
which makes sense for the symptoms that we're experiencing. I'm going to go ahead and kill the recording for a second. Okay guys, so moment of truth. We've got the new carburetor in store, not new, not new. We've got uh, the problem supposedly fixed and uh, we're running out of battery power here because the ignition's on. Um, I've adjusted it to where it should just take off. So let's see what happens when we try to start it up. Okay, and see here's the thing, um, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning and this thing's got, like I say, turbo mufflers on it, so we don't want to get up on it too much. Um, I think uh, my little adjustment on it earlier is pretty close to uh, just what the doctor ordered, so uh, I appreciate you guys all watching. Thanks. Um, be sure to uh, follow me on Facebook. Uh, at 85 studios and uh, like my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash 85 studios one and I will catch you all in the next video uh, this video will obviously be edited greatly for time and also it's starting to rain so we got perfect timing on this engines running and uh, I can't wait to drop it in gear and give it a little test drive Take care now, and uh, peace be with you guys. Do what it takes to be happy.